Dave Parody here. Just a quick video on how we can visualize net income from your inflows and outflows to the net income statement. And uh, I was really inspired by this visual. I came across it via some posts on Twitter and uh, Natty Bremer of Visual Cinnamon put this together. Uh, I have her permission to use it. And I think it's a really great way to help us break out of the typical income statement, which is looking like a spreadsheet because pretty much it is copied from a spreadsheet. So what she's done here in this visual is there are flows. So there are inflows that come in and outflows that go out. And uh, you can see how the net income is derived from those inflows and outflows. Some sp sp specific things that I want to focus on that I really liked about this visual. The first is that when you look at it, we've got inflows coming in. So these are the revenue inflows that start your income statement right at the top. We have other inflows. So occasionally you get other income in certain uh, other sort of lines in an income statement. So she so shows those as these inflows coming in from the right and joining that line that continues down the page. And then we see the outflows, the outflows we're part of the overall line going down and then they sort of peel away to the left. So very nice, we see all the inflows and outflows visually and it's really a good way to show how it becomes or is not becoming a part of the continuing line down the page. And when we look at the width of that line, the width of the flow line, very important here, it never changes in terms of comparability. So what I mean by that is the width as things move out, the width does not get any bigger. It is reduced. So you can always compare at any point in this visual, you can always compare the width of that flow line. And that's really important to the audience because they know they're getting an accurate representation of the numbers behind the visual. As we zoom in and take a look, they have these intermediary totals. So in any um, income statement, you're going to have intermediary totals. Here, she has made sure that we can tell that it's an intermediary total by this uh, diagonal line pattern that she uses on top of the width line. So visually, we know that it's an intermediary total. And then all of the inflows and outflows, whether they are initial ones or they come in later on at any level, all of them are labeled so we know what it is and the values are, values are shown. This is very important because one of the pushbacks you get on visuals is, oh, we don't have all the detail. Well, here you do. There's, there's no detail missing. So I looked at this visual. I thought, this is really great. Now, the way she created it is with programming languages, and she built a model where she could uh, use the previous year's numbers, waiting for the current year's numbers, and then just plug them in. So in the world that, that we work in with just Microsoft Office is all we have on the desktop, how do, we, how do we use these ideas to come up with a visual for a net income statement? And so here's what I came up with. This is created in Excel. And I want to walk through and, and show you how I used some of those uh, great ideas that I got from the previous visual here in Excel. So the first thing is that I have inflows. Inflows are indicated both in the green color as well as they flow from left to right. And then we have outflows going from right to left and in the orange color. So we know what the inflows are, we know what the outflows are, not just at the start, but also in the later stages. I've also indicated the intermediary totals in blue. So again, just like we saw in the original visual, it's very clear to know what are inflows, what are outflows, what are the intermediary totals. All the bars in this graph are actually a single graph. So this is a, using a stacked bar graph, that's the graph type in Excel, but it's all one single graph so that we have comparability. The consistency of the scale allows you to really know that the comparability of the length of each bar is accurate. All the inflows and outflows. So I've put them all there, I have them labeled and I have the values and that is a deliberate choice because I want people to not have that excuse of, oh, I can't use the visual because I don't have the detail. All the detail is there and all of these labels are done uh, using the tools in Excel. They're driven by the data sheet. It, they're not text boxes added on later, which means that 
it's easy to build this once and reuse it. And indeed, that's sort of one of the other things I wanted to point out. I'm using a graph table here that uses formulas. Formulas to look at the original data and then determine uh, where should we graph this. So we're breaking up into multiple data series. We're having uh, formatting based on those data series, labeling based on those data series. So this is all built in advance. And then if the data changes, or I should say when the data changes, because so many financial professionals live in a world where they always have to update their data, the graph is automatically going to update. Some of the key lessons I take from this inspirational visual and the work I did to create the visual in Excel. First, we need to make sure that everything has meaning. So direction and color has to have meaning. The audience will be interpreting it that way. Comparability is important. Make sure that the scale is consistent so that visual comparison is accurate. Explanatory text is needed. Here it's uh, the types of income or uh, expense as well as the values. Add that when it's needed. In this case, the audience expects it, so we need to put it there. And then finally, build your charts so that when you have to update them, it is easy to do. You just change the values and the chart updates itself. So we can use some of these visuals that we see that have been created in other tools and say, how do we apply these lessons to visuals that we can create in the tools we have, like Excel?